morning everyone, Steph here. Um, I've noticed a few misconceptions floating around on the group regarding the components of the printer and what everything does. While this information is available on the Epson manuals on the member arena, I thought I'd give you a personal tour of my printer quick, my facility, um, and show you, tell you a little bit more about what everything does. Just a quick disclaimer, you'll see that my printer's cover is off. Um, this is expressly for the purpose of videos like this, so we can see on the inside, this is not the ideal running condition. Um, that's why I have the duct tape on it to stabilize it. Um, don't do this, okay? This is why it's open for videos. Okay, let's get into it. Right, so here we have my printer setup. Up there we have the ink tanks. I'm using the refillable bottles. They are quite high compared to some of your setups. No, my printhead is not dripping. No, I don't want you to try this. However, should you feel that you need a bit more pressure on your flow, experiment by putting them incrementally higher. I tested this, there's no drips coming from my head. So yes, you can do it, but test responsibly. So bring them incrementally up till you get the ideal pressure and then leave them there. Okay. Now getting to the printer. Um, I'm going to start with the ink flow first and then we'll get to the rest. So it starts at the tanks. It goes to the cartridges. Your cartridges have filters in them. Let me just take this down so my cartridges don't squirt. Obviously I'm in a quite a small room. Um, this is not ideal but I'm working with what I got. So your cartridge has filters in it. You always want your cartridge to be full, no air bubbles in it. And um, you can prime them, i.e. drawing with a syringe from the tanks if they do get empty and have air bubbles in them. Now, underneath the cartridge, you'll see the... Let me just grab a screwdriver. Underneath the cartridge, these are the manifold points that I'm always referring to. These can block with time. You can swab them with a foam swab as I have right here, dipped in cleaning solution, make sure the points are all clean. And then I also use a very fine needle to just check. And again, as always, be gentle. If you hurt those points, your flow is going to be uneven. So clean gently and you can use a fine needle. So from there, so this is essentially your first set of dampers because your cartridges have filters in them. This is why we have to change them en route because like dampers, the filters can block. Okay, so then your ink goes, the ink bay is at the back here. That's another filter plate. This is why we flush the machine to clean all of this out. Then it goes from the ink bay through the lines to your damper unit, which is underneath here. These are your second set of filters. Those need to be changed once in a while as well. Um, anything that blocks can impede flow. From there, there's um, internal pressurization here as well. And this is the carriage motor. From there, we get to the capping station. Now, also, I'd like you to note that my head is sitting on a lint-free cloth dipped in cleaning solution. Never, ever leave your print head hanging out. And also, this is what I mean when I say soak your print head. You put the cloth underneath it and let the head sit on that for, let's say, five to ten minutes. Just to give it, to soften the ink in the nozzles. Here we have the capping station. So, this is the wiper blade. This guy here scrapes the underneath of the print head when you run it clean. So, this needs to be spotless at all times. This here is the cap top. And underneath this, this your printhead rests here. These edges need to be really clean so because they push up against the top of the head to make a good seal. And there's a pump underneath this. You can't really see it. But basically the pump is underneath the capping station and these it leads to the waste ink lines which leads to your waste ink container. Now, the capping station, three important parts. Your wiper blade needs to be clean. Your cap edges needs to be clean so it can make a good seal on the head so the pump can suck the ink through the head. And the lines leading to the pump, so these guys, need to be clear as well. 
for the correct pressure to come through. This is why we constantly harp on cleaning the wiper blade, cleaning the cap top and flushing the capping station so that everything runs quickly. This is your head's main support system. Um, so it's very, very important to take care of it. And another reason why when we harp on climate is that the lines underneath, this dries out, the lines underneath dry out. So if you've been running in really hot and dry conditions, everything clogs faster. So once you address that humidity issue, um, it's a good idea to flush the capping station. There is a video on this. You can use isopropyl or I've actually switched to hot water now, which works beautifully. Then let's get to the other bits. The metal part here is your carriage rail. This is your carriage, your print head carriage. So this glides along the rail. A lot of the encoder errors that you get is due to this rail being dry, then the carriage struggles to move and also crap can build up on the edges here. So it's important to keep this clean and well lubricated. On the opposite side of the capping station, we have the spit station. Now I'm using sanitary pads cut up. This is important to keep clean and moist because your head purges ink here. If you have nothing in this area, the ink that the head purges, remember your head is pictolita size droplets. So it's a fine, fine mist. If that there's nothing here to catch the mist, it mists back onto the head, which dirties your head and you have to run more cleaning. Conversely, if it's dried and packed on with ink, it can splash back. So you always want to keep this nice and clean. On the back here, um, I can't show you this because my print is in an odd position. At the back here, we have the encoder sensor and wheel. Um, you can see it through the access panel. So that works together with the platen, the carriage, and here, the strip here, is the encoder strip. So all of those work together to tell the carriage where it's at in relation to the platen, etc., etc. So a lot of issues can be traced back to these components being dirty. Um, I use makeup sponges, um, makeup brushes. I'm unwilling to admit how many good makeup brushes I have donated to my DTG. They might revoke my gold card, but carefully dust the sensor and you can wipe the wheel with denatured alcohol, methylated spirits. Don't use pure isoprop, it's too strong. Um, so this strip, of obviously here, it can catch ink spots. And if your carriage hits a spot, it loses traction. It doesn't know where it is. So it's important to keep this clean. And as well as the encoder wheel and the sensor, you can just gently brush. So carriage rail encoder strip it's also called a scale by Epson and this is your carriage belt so this drives the carriage now I've had endless hassles before I figured out how important the lubrication and the unimpeded movement of the carriage is um, initially I thought my belt was skipping because it started skipping at the back here but at the end of the day it was skipping because the carriage was struggling to move left and right so by lubricating and cleaning this rail carriage rail carriage belt encoder strip um i managed to bypass all those hassles i'm just going to put this ink back quick so i want you to see this a lot of you have expresses all i do is i place the lint-free cloth underneath press it down put it up against the head obviously as always gently does it with everything so this is a clean lint free cloth so you can see my four white channels there you can see my yellow my black my cyan and my magenta so this was a nice little soak to clean up those nozzles and i've already flushed and cleaned my capping station so from here i would recess the wiper blade by turning the white vinyl screw always gently does it so ooh, this is not being my friend right now so i'm recessing the wiper blade and i'm going to this machine's on already you can either just switch it on from here or 
you can swing into a head cleaning. So you'll see that my carriage is now rehoming itself. I don't like locking the head with a vinyl screw. I try to touch it as little as possible. And I feel more comfortable with the head locking itself like this because it's very easy to over tighten it. Again, my process isn't set in stone, but this works for me. Um, yeah, that's basically everything. So, tanks, two cartridges, manifold points you want to keep clean, goes through the lines to the damper unit and through the head. And the main thing driving all of this, yes, there's pressurization there and obviously from the height of my cart, but the main thing driving this is your capping station, which sucks the ink, drawing it through the head and keeping it flowing. So this is why the capping station is so incredibly important. Right. So that was a very quick pass over the system. Um, if you guys have any questions or would like me to explain anything in more detail, please let me know um, and I would be happy to answer it. The only thing that I'm really, besides obviously telling you what the components are, the, the main thing I want to illustrate is that in this katana and in any DTG, it's, the ink flow is a very simple concept. There's no unicorns, no fairy tales, no weird monsters lurking. Basically, to keep a DTG running, you need to keep the flow going. This is why daily nozzle checks are the most important part of your maintenance routine, to see where the ink flow is at. If you notice degen uh, degeneration, you need to take action immediately or it blocks permanently in the head. The printhead is just a link in the ink flow system. It doesn't block on its own. It blocks when the ink comes to a standstill within it. And with that, I want to discuss the printhead a little bit with you guys. So, number one, this is the print plate, this mirror part, and these are just holders on the side. Now, these things catch ink. And this can lead to transfer onto your shirt, or if there's a little thread dangling, it can actually smear the ink all over your print. So it's important to keep this clean, but it's also very, very important to be very gentle with this. So as I showed you, I'm just going to grab a lint-free cloth here behind me. These are quite stained. I reuse them, but I do wash them out and they have no chunks on them. These are weirdly expensive. Um... So yeah, I do recycle them. So the idea is to gently wipe the underside of the, the mirror plate and you can work a little bit more on the edges, but never rub hard on this mirror plate. So what this mirror plate actually is, you can see that there's some seals on the side there. Okay. What this mirror plate actually is, it's a very fragile laminate. It's layers of electronics and plastic and obviously the holes that you put that your um, ink spray out of we're talking tiny tiny nozzles you can't actually see them a little bit but we're talking pictoliter size here so the printhead consists of two parts um, just gonna have a screwdriver so what I was saying is this is very, very fragile. And if you're flushing your printhead and it's leaking out the sides here, you've murdered it. Um, you have separated the laminate. So what happened is the nozzles were blocked and by forcing fluid through it hard, the layers at the bottom separate and the ink seeps out the sides and not the nozzles. Obviously a head like that will never spray properly again. So your head consists of two parts. You have I'm just quickly going to disassemble this, of course, <laughs> should have done this before the video. I am taking out the screws, there are three screws at the bottom, one, two, three. Now the thing is, um, again, there's a lot of weird voodoo going around the forums and everyone has their own way of doing this. I'm not saying anyone else is wrong, I'm just saying this is what works for me, um, maybe because I'm really clumsy and not very good at working gently. So for me, taking out a print head and flushing it is very much a last ditch effort. Um, 
remember what I said about the printer and the flow? The thing is, if your head is semi-blocked, good hard running and having everything functioning op optimally will restore flow 99% of the time, if it's not too bad. So if you're missing a couple of nozzles, don't rip out the print head and flush it. It's not necessary. Give it a soak on the machine, clean out your capping station and check for improvement over a couple of days. If it continues to degenerate, obviously take further action. But most of the time, just getting the printer to function properly, it'll take care of itself, the printhead. So if you have a really blocked printhead, first key is gently. There's some really bad videos about people forcing a syringe on like this and pushing stuff through. You will separate the laminate. The ideal way to unblock a printhead is to rest your plate, obviously not getting any of the electronics wet, on a lint-free cloth. You can use a saucer and then to gently pull ink back through it. This puts less stress on the laminate. And the key to unblocking a head is less is more. If you get a little bit of flow going, more than you had, let's say you had a half a channel out of four, if you have two, um, put it back, see if the system will fix it. Because the odds of you trying too hard is you're going to murder it. And these printers, with the right rip settings, you can print with two channels of white. So if you have to eke it out, it's better to print slowly with a sick head than to have no head and wait for another one or rip one out of your donor machine. So be very careful with your print head. So we have manifold spikes on top here too, which you can always um, manually clean. This is an old head which I got out of a client's thing, but you can actually see that that one manifold point is blocked. So it's a good idea to check those once in a while. Um, and then, so I've separated, this is the head plate. I've separated that. This is the manifold. So in here, you also have a filter. This thing is inert. So you can, if you want to play hard with a head, you can have loads of fun with this one. You can really clean it up. You can soak it in hot water, etc. This is the sensitive part. So, um, there's tiny little rubber seals at the top. Um, in my experience, I haven't had great luck with unblocking the manifold, but I have heard other people have much better luck. So it could be worth a try, especially if you note that the manifolds are really, really crusty. Um, this you would then rest on a lint-free cloth with cleaning solution while you go to work on this guy. So, and then afterwards you would reassemble and again gently draw ink through it. Pushing back is only really, it's a technician move. Um, a lot of the videos that you see online with where they force it on and spray is a technician move. So the technician will swoop in and check your printhead if it's not spraying he doesn't really care about killing it um, because more often than not, the parts are cheaper than their time. So it's just a test of the head spraying. So you're mostly going to be drawing back. Reverse waterfalling is what we call this. And once in a while, you're going to gently push to see if there's any spray going. But so if you have a little bit of spray, you're looking for a fine mist, not drops. And if it's leaking out on the sides, you went too far. So it's a very, very simple concept. Keep the ink flowing and be gentle. Okay, I really hope this helps. Um, I'm going to do a diagram of this as well. And um, I think this video is a good overview, but please let me know if I missed something. Thanks.